This podcast is proudly brought to you by the Sightsheds Learn and Ski Initiative. Uh, it's a program we kicked off back in uh, August of 2016, uh, where I took a group of enthusiastic business owners from all over the country over to New Zealand. Actually, it was in Wanaka in New Zealand, where we took part in the very first Learn and Ski program. We skied in the morning, and then we did a business workshop in the afternoon. It was a fantastic time. Everyone had a great experience over there. And it was so good, in fact, that uh, this March, we are launching the second Learn and Ski. And this time, we're taking a group of trade-based business owners from all over the country to the lovely Japan. And we're actually going to a place called Hakaba, which is in the Nagano region where the uh, Olympics was held. I've personally been there it is a crazy, crazy place, just full of ridiculous amount of snow, and it's going to be an unbelievable experience. Sadly, we can only take 20 people to this one, obviously, due to logistics. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to coordinate, so a quarter of the tickets are already sold as we've been emailing our group. However, if you are interested in the snow and you do want to learn about some unbelievable business initiatives that can help you compound your business this year, then this event is certainly for you. We're going to be talking... I'll just touch a little bit on what you'll learn over there. We're going to be talking about specifically strategies, marketing campaigns that we've implemented with our clients that bring in you know, up to two to 10 leads every single day. We're going to talk about the most common elements you need to have on your website that can make or break your lead generation efforts. And we're going to talk about how you can turn your um, I don't know, tire kickers into customers and more importantly, how to turn those customers into raving fans. Uh, and then we're going to go through some step-by-step -step workings together with you personally on how to set up your very first first Facebook ad campaign. We're also going to talk about uh, systems and processes that can cut down your admin work. And while we're over there, uh, internet permitting, we're actually going to hire somebody live during the week with the hope that you guys can learn how to hire somebody to outsource some of your office managerial tasks, et cetera. We're going to have some breakout sessions there where we're going to focus specifically on your business. And I'm holding this event with Will from Growth Labs, who you guys would have heard on the podcast previously. Will is just a marketing guru, and we're just going to be doing heaps of stuff coming up. Uh, he's also an avid skier. So yeah, it's going to be a fantastic event. So the dates are going to be March 4 to March 10. Uh, the location's in Hakaba. If you want more information about what the package includes and everything, then head across to the siteshed.com forward slash Japan 2017. All the information is on there. And I just, once again, I stress again, there's only 20 tickets to this. A quarter or over a quarter of them are gone, which means that if you want to get in, you want to get in quick. Now, this is the first, this has gone out to the, the podcast community. So I can't imagine they'll last too long. It's extremely good value for, the, for, the, uh, for what it is. Uh, it's just a way that I can help you guys spend a bit of time investing on your business while also taking you to an amazing location where we can just have a whole heap of fun while we're there. You 100% you, you'll enjoy it. And um, and this is what one of the other attendants said at, about the 2016 event. Yeah, I went to Learn and Ski 2016 in Wanaka. It was fantastic. We uh, had a good time on the, on the mountain and we also learn a little bit and um, I found it really great networking with the guys and, and sort of meeting some other guys in, in the trades. Yeah, just a really great experience. So anyway, folks, there it is. Uh, you've heard it from one of the attendees. Uh, it's going to be an incredible event. Get across there. You're going to learn a whole load of stuff that you can implement straight into your business. I mean, all the information in the world's useless unless you implement it. And we're actually going to sit there and help you implement it. So, I mean... It's, it's worth that alone, regardless of the world-class skiing. Head across to the siteshed.com forward slash Japan 2017. Get it locked in quick, otherwise you'll miss out. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to Toolbox Talks on the Sideshed. Uh, my name is Matt Jones, and this entire series is uh, called Getting Stuff Done, and I'm joined by Tom Reader from Motorhand.com. And the reason we conducted this series is because coming into the new year, I know a lot of you out there struggle a little bit with goal setting, and more to the point, keeping yourself accountable to goals throughout the year. So. Uh, the hope is that you can take some of the uh, strategies that you learn from within these podcast series and go and implement into your business. And it's all about implementation. So this is the third part, um, which is called getting yourself, uh, keeping yourself accountable to your game plan. If you missed the first episode, it was called creating a game plan within your business. And then the second episode was called setting goals that count towards your game plan. I strongly suggest you go back and listen to those ones because the way we've structured this series is that each episode leads into the other. And at the end of each episode, you get something that you can go and implement. So I'd encourage you to go back to listen to episode one, then two, then three. 
and then you can go and apply everything you've learned and hopefully you'll set a good roadmap for yourself uh, coming into 2017, which of course is the goal. So um, if you have any comments or any questions, you can go right ahead and just leave them in the comments section of the show notes. Uh, failing that, if you you can if you see this across social media, you can just post some comments wherever you've seen that or you can uh, leave us some comments or leave us a review in iTunes there. So that'd be fantastic as well. Anyway, um, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this series and make 2017 count. Go get them. Giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Hello and welcome back to part three of the Getting Stuff Done series I'm conducting with Mr. Tom Reba out of Colorado in the United States. Uh, In the first episode, we were talking about creating a game plan in your business. In the second episode, we were talking about setting goals that count towards your game plan. And in this episode, we're talking about keeping yourself accountable towards your game plan. Tom, welcome back to the microphone. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Matt. Thanks for having me back. Motor hard, man. Yeah, absolutely. So um, so this is the third and final uh, episode in the Getting Stuff Done series. And um, for the listeners out there, definitely go back and check out the other two episodes because it all kind of segues into where, we, where we're going with this episode, which is basically keeping yourself um, accountable to the goals that we've been talking about in the previous episodes. So Tom, this has been a great series so far. We've, and we've, we've given out some, you've given us some real gold there and um, I suppose setting, getting some frameworks and getting some clarity around how to create goals. But as we discussed in the first episode, it's all good creating goals. However, if you're not actually keeping accountable to them, then it's kind of, you know, rainbows and unicorns. So in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And is that your experience, you know, with your, with your, with your coaching clients and things like that? You know, do you find that that's, that's often a bottleneck? People are okay with, you know, creating a goal, but then sometimes they'll drop the ball a little bit with, you know, sticking to it. Well, this is where the rubber meets the road, man. Right. You, know, you know, we live in a world where, you know, people get paid for results, right? If you're a professional athlete, you're not sinking the shot, Right. you're fired, you know, and yep. you can have all the goals in the world, but if you don't implement and you're not executing on those things, you know, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, so I, I think, you know, for me, this is all about what, what have you gotten done, man? And and not letting yourself off the hook, you know, being, being real with yourself. And, and, uh, so yeah, I'm excited to talk, talk about this here today. Okay. Well, I mean, obviously this is relevant to anybody pretty much in the world, regardless of their business owners or I mean, it, it's relevant for personal goals, business goals, whatever it is. I think everyone should have some sort of accountability. Otherwise, you know, you just typically don't get things done. And I suppose in scenarios where we're business owners, sometimes I and mean, I know for myself, especially because you work for yourself, there's not really anyone there cracking the whip for you. Whereas, you know, when you're working in a job, you've got managers that are looking after what you're doing and they're, you know, they're keeping you accountable to things. However, when you're working for yourself, sometimes we, it gets a little bit tricky in, in um, making that happen. So I'd be really interested to see how this, you know, setting an accountability plan works. And I, I know I've in the past had real success with, you know, accountability partners and doing things like that. So I'm really looking forward to, I suppose, seeing what your thoughts are here, you know, from a business owner's perspective. So let's talk a little bit about, I suppose, why we would go around, why we, why we keep ourselves accountable to, to these goals. And then, I mean, obviously, you know, what we will get into a little bit further down is, is the process in doing that and how we can actually, how we can map that out and implement, and implement through whatever tools or whatever systems you recommend or whatever you teach. But, you know, why is it important for people to actually get really proactive in key in accountability? Oh, great question. And here's, you know, as you're asking it and talking, I'm, I'm thinking I, um, here's one of my core beliefs about business. Okay. It's not wrong to, let's talk about money real quick. It's not wrong to make money or lose money. What's the worst thing is not knowing why. Right. Okay. And so by whatever the goal is, you don't want to wake up at the end of the year and go, how the heck did I get here? You know, or the other side of it go, well, I set all these goals and then comes to the end of the year and you have no idea where you're at. It's like the guy, you know, and I know you guys are driving down the road, listening to this right now, raise your hand. If this is you be honest (laughs) that don't look at your numbers the whole year and you hand your accountant or your bookkeeper, a big shoebox of receipts and you wait three weeks and then they tell you if you made money or not. Yeah. Okay. And so without the regular accountability, without the measurement things in place to just keep you on track, 
you're the, the worst thing. Number one is you're not going to get where you want to go. The second thing is if you're not on track, you're not going to have any time to recover. Yeah. You know, if I'm halfway through the year and I'm, I'm accountable to my goal and I'm realizing, Hey, maybe there's some patterns in the marketplace. Maybe, maybe half my team quit and it just made it hard to produce work or whatever happens. If you're not accountable and paying attention to those things, you're not going to have any time to, to recoup and write the ship. Yep. So I, I would encourage people. I mean, it's as simple as listen, you, without being accountable, you are just not going to get where you want to go. And I think, you know, you talk about the, the business owner who's kind of off by himself, right? And maybe he doesn't have the team and, and um, he's got these goals. I, I think a couple other just natural accountability partners are your, are your um, bank account and your calendar. Right. <laughs> you know, so those, those are right out of the gate. Real, real simple indicators. Um, if you find yourself in debt, can't pay the bills, living check to check, yeah, you know, right there, and and you're working like crazy, and your significant others complaining that you're never around, I and mean, you're missing your kids' games or whatever. I mean, that that's a an accountability tool in itself, right there. So, I wonder if sometimes, Tom, you know, some like sometimes the fact that you may be making money can also be like a bit of a polarizer on the business like it might give you a bit of sense of false positioning like okay we're making money Mm -hmm. everything's going well whereas there's probably more indicators you know but beyond that oh absolutely so you know it's common for a business owner to feel like okay i'm getting checks coming in all the time right Mm. so i must be making money i'm busy so i'm making money so you know you want to talk an accountability partner in that sense Um, to me, it's the, it's the job costing after every job, Yeah, you know, sitting down and going, all right, we, we sold this for 10 grand. We spent, we plan to spend five grand to do it and have five grand left. We bid it for a hundred man hours or whatever. How did we do? And that's an indicator right in real time. Um, that's going to tell you if, if you're on, if you're on track to win or not. I suppose what I, what I'm, what I sort of was leaning towards there is, you know, you're in your business and you could be making money and you, you're mm-hmm. comfortable. And as we all know, the, the biggest enemy of our success is comfort. <laughs> you, know, sure. like you, you could be there, you could be making money, but realistically, you, you could be making more. You just haven't, you haven't set any goals in order to do that because you're kind of comfortable where you are. Yeah. I mean, there's some people that are doing well, right? And they're making money and stuff, but maybe they're not, maybe they're not fulfilling their full potential. Exactly. You know, maybe, maybe, you know, I have a client that I'm thinking of right now that they're absolutely killing it yeah. in profit and they don't track their man hours. Right. And they won't. We've had talks about it and they're like, no, we don't feel like doing it. I'm like, well, you're leaving like another hundred grand of profit on the table a year easily. Yeah. You know, and um, they're like, yeah, but we just don't want to do it because it'll jack up our culture. And I'm like, all right, that's your choice. Yeah. You know, so, but yeah, I mean, it, it's absolutely, you know, I, I don't want to, um, I want to look back and hopefully the people listening to this do and go, listen, I did everything I could to maximize whatever potential I had. Yep. And so, yeah, maybe you are making money right now, but you know, right there, if you're, if you're comfortable, then obviously you're not stretching yourself with big enough goals. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more about, I suppose, the how, like how do we go about keeping ourselves accountable? So I've, as I said before, I've had success with accountability partners. Mm -hmm. I've had, to be honest, I've been in these, you know, these business mentoring groups and coaching programs and things like that before. And I've had limited success personally. I just found that sometimes unless it was one-on-one, it was very, it was very sort of group orientated and the accountability wasn't there. Mm -hmm. However, then I've, you know, I mean, I've worked with some one-on-one coaches in the past too, and that's kind of worked uh, a lot better. But what's, what's your experience here? I mean, realistically, what, what, what are you, what do you think works best for people? Well, I tell you what, I, um, when I look at myself and when I look at those that I work with, when you are ponying up a chunk of money every month to have a mentor or a coach, yeah, it's amazing how accountable you are because you got skin in the game. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so now listen, I'm not telling everyone to run out and hire a coach or something right now. It's not where I'm going, but just you know, one of the first thing that came to mind is those people that, uh, you know, I've run like free or really low cost accountability groups in the past, and we don't have near 
the results that we do in the really expensive ones. Yeah, right. Okay? So, um, so I, I listen. If you don't have skin in the game, I mean, the the pain of not hitting your goals has to be greater than the discipline it's going to take you to get there. Yeah. You know, I think some people are just comfortable in their misery. You know, they just want some drama in their life. Yeah. And they want something to always be wrong. And and so that's squirrel moment there. I won't go there. But um, <laughs> so, you know, I think if you don't have some skin in the game, then it just ain't going to work. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's that it's really that simple. Now, outside of a coach and a mentor and a group and accountability partner, like earlier I said, you know, I think if you want an accountability partner. Look at your checking account. Yeah. You know, look at your P&L, look at your balance sheet. Yeah. Look at your calendar. Are you too busy? Uh, are you on the hamster wheel? Uh, for me, my my greatest tools for being accountable are number one as um, is a is a that monthly wall calendar I think I talked about in our first episode. Yeah. Okay. Where talk us through that. Yeah. So Jerry Seinfeld, a uh, comedian, was asked, you know, how did you become such a great comic? And he shared this story. And and um, and I read this. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of the writer James Clear. No, I haven't. Um, jamesclear.com. If you just Google James Clear Seinfeld method, you'll see the article. It's a great okay. article. And, and I totally ripped this off. And this is what I use. So Jerry said, he was talking to some old comic and he was getting advice from this old man. I forget who it was. And the old guy goes, well, listen, the best comics write the best jokes. And in order to write the best jokes, you got to write a lot of jokes. <laughs> okay. Yep. And so Seinfeld went out and bought a year at a glance wall calendar. Yeah. Like you, you draw them with a marker on or whatever. Yeah. 12 months. And Jerry said to himself, basically, I'm going to write a joke a day. And every day I write a joke, I'm putting a big red X on the calendar. Mm -hmm. And he says, after a couple days, a few days, you, there's a chain of X's. Yeah. He says, then my goal becomes not to break the chain. And when I do break the chain, my goal is then to make it go longer than the last chain. Right. And so the result is, you know, we have Jerry Seinfeld, world famous, you know, successful comedian and all that other stuff. And so what I took and what I take from this is I identify for me, it's um, I identify what are the habits and the actions that I need to participate in each day that chip away that are going to get me closer to my goal. Mm -hmm. All right. So, for instance, earlier we talked about you want one hundred and fifty thousand dollar net profit. Yeah. OK. So I might, you know, give me a minute. I'm pulling my calculator out here. You know, 150 grand is 28, just under 2,900 bucks a month, or I'm sorry, a week yeah. of profit, you know, divided by a five day work week, it's 580 bucks a day. Yeah. And so I might sit there and go, all right, well, geez, you know, what, what's a daily action that can help me crap 580 bucks a day extra. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And it might be picking up my phone one time a day and calling, calling somebody that's a past customer of mine yeah. and just saying, Hey Joe, it's Tom. I was thinking about your deck. I know that it was really problematic, you know, with the other guys you had do it. And we did it last year. I just wanted to call and see how it's looking, man. Your warranty's up in a month and I'd like to come out and look at it and make sure that we could take care of anything that, you know, is still under warranty for you. Yeah. You know, just a simple warranty call. So that would be one of those things where if I identified that as one of the actions that's going to lead me towards a higher profit, um, I would say, you know, that that might be one of my X's on my calendar. OK, because it's, it, you know, you, you know, you know, the whole compound effect thing, you know, um, you know, it's just those little daily actions. And what do they say? If, you know, whatever you want to get better at, do a, do one percent better each day, one percent more each day. Um, and compounded over a year, it's like thirty eight hundred percent, something crazy. OK, so um, so I would I would say. For me, I've tried the apps, I've tried the electronic stuff, I've tried a million different things, and for me, it's been this kind of this this kind of Seinfeld method thing that I shared is, and I put it where I'm going to see it um, all the time. I have a client I was on the phone with last week. Uh, he's been struggling with lead flow, and I said, "Hey, go get one of these calendars, and and whatever." Um, at the end of the day, six o'clock by six o'clock every day or whatever, you write on that calendar in the day how many leads you got that day that came into your business. And he texts me a couple days later with a picture and 
you know, he's been doing it for, actually, I think it's been a couple of weeks now he's been doing it. And, um, and he's like, dude, I hate seeing zeros on there. It yeah. kills me to write a zero. <laughs> and so what's funny is he's like, shoot, he sees it. It's in his office. Cause he's like, I used to put it in a place in the shop or something like that. And he's right. like, now I put it where I'm going to see it every day. And he says, when I see that, man, it's one o'clock, it's two o'clock. I don't have a lead yet. He says, he goes, I start picking my phone up. And I generate an opportunity. So now he's ma- he's forcing himself to be accountable to the leads goal that he set, which we determined by you know understanding his closing rate and his average job size and how much money he wants to make. So for me, it's been that 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 simple uh, wall calendar. It's so funny. I'm I'm so close then because I'm sitting here in my office and I've got a a, a whiteboard which I've specifically drawn up as a calendar, and it's mm-hmm. full of red crosses. But all I've been doing is ticking off the days. <laughs> mm. So I guess what I really need to do is uh, set some actionable daily tasks towards that. And then I'm, uh, then I'm ahead. Well, there you go, man. I'm going to send you a you photo know, just, of this. You're going to laugh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Send me that, man. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and so listen, you know, for me now, now I know we're talking about goals. All right. Yeah. Well, I don't. Um, all right. Let's go back to the $150,000 profit thing. If my goal is 150 grand in net profit, the things, and, and again, this is just me because I'm pretty aware of who I am and how I'm wired and what makes me tick. The thing I, I earlier in the other episode I talked about, I have three check marks that I put on my calendar each day. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. One's red and that's personal. I'm not going to, I don't tell anybody what that is. Nobody in the world but me knows what that means. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's a character thing. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you that much. The next check is a green check, and that's the days that I don't drink alcohol. Mm-hmm. Now, listen, I'm not, I'm not an AA, I'm not an alcoholic, but I have a family history and a tendency to want to drink yeah. in certain times, okay? And so the green check is, um, you know, when, and I, I do it every night before I go to bed. I walk over to this thing, and I, ch- I put these checks on there in my different colors, and, I, and I've never missed a red day. Uh, missed very few green days for the alcohol and the black check is me exercising. Yep. Okay. And I miss very few of those. Now, those three things that I've identified, those are my little one bite at a time compound effect, 1% type things. And I know myself enough to know that if I, if, if I can check the, the red, the green and the black every day, I'm going to hit whatever revenue goal and profit goal I might ever set for myself. Okay. So, so this comes back to just knowing yourself. So I would encourage people to, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a daily sales goal. It, it could be more of a character thing or a habitual thing yep. than it is a, just a math thing. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, another thing that I'm, I think is really important if you want to be accountable is um, Jim Rohn, old, old motivational speaker, passed away a few years ago. Uh, is coined for saying you become the average of the five people you hang out with the most. Oh yeah, yeah. And to me, this has been probably the biggest thing that's had impact in my career in the last six, seven years. Um, in fact, I got I have a, a really good friend and a client in town with me right now, staying with me for a couple of days, and him and I were just talking about this today. That when you're hanging out with the right five that think differently than you, it starts to rub off, and Good or bad, right? Oh. So, you know, your mom, your mom said, choose your friends wisely. The other, yep. the other thing that kind of goes with this is try to be in a room where you're not the smartest guy. Yeah, okay? exactly. Yep. Um, and so those, to me, are kind of hand in hand that when I'm That's surrounding myself, me. what's that? That's easy for me. Yeah, no kidding. That's, uh, <laughs> I, I don't have too much of a hard time with that either. Um, well, back, you know, one of our earlier episodes, I talked about being in this, the, the billionaire guy yeah. who pictured what his doorknobs looked like yeah. in his house. Well, you know, I remember being in a meeting with him and t- about 10 other guys. And I had, I had just had a devastating couple years prior to that financially. They, they made more in five minutes than I made in a year at the time. And I'm sitting at this table with these guys and it caused me to think differently. It caused me to have a different attitude. And I, I held myself to a higher standard and realized that, man, we, we're, we're all the same here and I'm, I can run with the big dogs. And so for me, it was a real confidence builder. So I think you got to surround yourself with the right five. I don't care what your 
quote unquote personal accountability system is. I think we lean on groups. Uh, groups are important. So it almost sounds like I'm contradicting myself here, but I think you need to hang around with people that are going to challenge you yeah. and not let you off the hook. But at the same time, I think you, you just need to have a strong enough why to stop letting yourself off the hook and just find a way to win. Yeah. And whatever that means to you. I think it was John Maxwell that coined that the, oh, it maybe wasn't, but someone with the, the power of association, you know, talking about mm-hmm. that same thing, the top five. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It is, man. So it's a hard, it's a hard obstacle to, to, to approach sometimes as well, because it sometimes means you've got to step away momentarily or permanently from people that are, you know, significantly close to Mm -hmm. It's a big paradigm. Yeah. And again, it doesn't mean you don't still love those people and stuff, but you got to just go, listen, I'm, I only got so much time here, Yeah, you know, and I gotta be, I gotta be picky who I, who I spend it with. So I, and I, I think one last thing is I'm just thinking about accountability. You know, what, what do they say? What, um, Shoot, I, I always butcher these things. Uh, <laughs> what you you need to um, you need to inspect what you expect, right? Okay, and so in relation to your team, you know, I think you should be having a, it, it, you know, a weekly 10, 15, 20 minute max meeting, and just going, all right, where are we at on this stuff? Yeah, you know. So if you got a sales guy and you know you know, Hey, listen, you know, that one of the activities of, you know, hitting 150 grand in net profit is going to be him calling past customers every week. Yeah. Then you need to have a point in that meeting where you go, you know, Hey, Bill, all right, where are you at last seven days? How many customers did you call and what happened? And, um, and so, you know, cause what we focus on improves. And if each week we come into a meeting and as the leader, we have a different focus, we don't have a routine down and then people don't know what to expect. You know, and yeah. then they don't ever get into a groove, and there's no consistent forward momentum. Actually, there's something that I wanted to ask you was the, the the frequency of um of the accountability management because I mean obviously if you can if you sit down and have a monthly meeting with you know with 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 Tom in relation to how many how many clients he's chased up and how many leads he's he's been following up on et cetera, then the margin for error is going to be a lot greater. Or, or smaller. I mean, it could be a lot highly successful, or it could be, you know, a lot more failure. Because you know, if as if if you do it on a weekly basis, you'd be kind of get a bit more of a, you'd be able to steer it a lot quicker in in the right direction. Hey, next week try doing this, this, and this. Whereas if it's a monthly thing, then it'd be like, oh wow, that was last month. Then you had this much done. Okay, then now you know it makes it a bit trickier to to, to uh, I suppose manage. Mm-hmm. So do you do like? Is it do you encourage or do you teach? Um, people to implement like a weekly a weekly accountability meeting where they sit down and they just tick the boxes and then set goals for the next week. Is that how it works? Yeah. So um, I'll give you a couple different examples. So we would have a, a weekly operations meeting with our team. Yep. And in that operations meeting, the foreman would have to report on their current. Uh, the, so basically, the first thing we go around the circle and every foreman gives an account for the last job that they just finished. Yeah. Okay, so hey, here's the Reber job. It was bid for 100 hours, uh, brought it in at 110. You know, clients happy. I got the deposit. I got the final check, and no loose ends. And then you go to the next guy. You know, Reber job was bid for 100, finished in 80, whatever. Then they go around and they talk. They report on the jobs they're currently on. Yeah. Like so, I'm on the Reber. It was bid for 100. We're halfway through. I'm on track to finish. So here's here's what this does. In a real gentle way, you're basically putting them in front of their peers. Yeah. And nobody wants to come to that meeting and be over hours. Yeah. Okay. So I think create an environment, and this isn't a time for discussion. It's not a time to coach anyone up. It's just an it's just a here are the facts, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And um, and what's funny is you know, another thing we would report on is additional work orders sold, you know, upsells. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I've had zero upsells this month or this week. Nobody wants to come to the meeting with a zero. And so just that, that little bit of gentle peer pressure consistently done many times is enough to do that. But here's where a lot of guys go wrong. They say they're going to have a meeting and they have a meeting and they do this. And then they have a meeting the next week, but they change the format of it. Right. Or 
they do it two or three times in a row, how many times as an owner you go, I'm really serious about this. You know, we're going to do this from now on. And then something comes up, you miss a meeting. And the next thing you know, it's been six months since you had some sort of meeting. Okay. And, and, and I hate meetings, by the way. I absolutely can't stand them. Yeah. However, I, I know that when we have regular meetings, we're usually about 10% more profitable. Yeah, like wow. right out, right out of the gate and gross profit. Cause we're just on the same page. And the other thing it does is it brings the whole team together and lets it, you know, sometimes when you're out of sight, you're out of mind and you you start pissing each other off. Yeah. You know, but when you come together and you have a coffee and a bagel and you all laugh together, you cry together, you high five each other and move on, you know, it builds that team. So I think in, in the, in the trades, you got to have some FaceTime once a week with the team. Yeah. And, um, and you know, on the sales side, you can have a quick sales meeting. You can incorporate the sales and operations meeting all into one. So you're maybe you report to the whole company, like, Hey, we, um, our leads goal for the month is 83 leads. And to date we're at 17, we're yep. a little bit behind and blah, blah, blah. And maybe your sales guys like, you know, Hey, this is what I've sold. This is how many appointments I've got. And it's just quick. It's factual. We're done in a half an hour with the whole thing. But it puts everyone in a position where they have to give an account for what they're what they're doing. So this is one thing that I'd, I'd like to ask you is, say for this weekly meeting, and just talking, I suppose, generally towards our listeners out there that are business owners. What are some of the what are some of the metrics they should be measuring regularly? So I'm guessing leads would be one of them. Um, profit goal, would you say? Yeah. So if we're talking, if we're talking, um, weekly KPIs, key performance indicators, yeah. metrics, what do you want to call them? Number one's oxygen, man. And that's leads, right? Yeah. I mean, if, if, if we don't have leads, we have nothing, we don't have a sale. And so, so I think there's gotta be a, um, a weekly, if not a daily focus on lead generation. Yeah. You know, then for me next is what are we selling? And then, you know, I think the third thing comes down to how are we fulfilling the jobs? So, um, you know, if you're bidding a job and you're not assigning some man hours to it and a job budget and some time frames and material budgets, you're really setting yourself up for some struggle. Okay. Cause, cause you're never going to know how you're doing. How do your how's your foreman know how he's doing? Yeah. If we don't give him a goal. Yeah. You know, and, and here's the other thing is an estimator. I mean, I've, I've been a, Terrible estimator and a good one. You know, I bid a job for a hundred that should be two hundred hours. Yeah. Well, if we're not having that dialogue and that metric each week, you know, where I sit down and he goes, "Yeah, I finished in two hundred and it was bid for a hundred and eighty. And if I, and he's not in the doghouse, but if I just go, "Okay, hey, where, where did we go wrong? Not where did I go wrong? Not where did you go wrong? But where did we go wrong as a team?" And he might go, "Listen, you gave me plenty of time for this and this and this, but we we needed like double the time on the cleanup." Yeah. Right. Or it might be, dude, the bid was spot on. It couldn't have been more perfect. Homeowner was just a chatty Kathy and wouldn't leave me alone. And it just, I ended up talking to her four hours a day, <laughs> you know, or, or whatever, or we ran into a condition on the site. So earlier I said, you know, to, to win, uh, make money or lose money is not neither good or bad. It's not knowing why either way. And so I would really talk about how are we fulfilling what's actually happening on the job site versus what was bid. I mean, yeah. to me, I think if you start with those things, number of leads, dollars coming in, you know, what's on the radar coming up. Um, and then uh, obviously the job budget, the job cost. And then the fourth thing would be, I would be um, you should have some sort of rating system or grade card in place that when you finish a job, you know, crew leader or foreman turns in the paperwork and he hit the job budget, everything's fine. But if it's a shitty, you know, um, grade report, you know, if it was a bad experience for the customer, then that's not a win. So is that feedback from the customer we're talking here? Yeah. So we would, um, you know, you could do a, you could send them a link. Um, I like having the, I like having my foreman hand them a self-addressed envelope and a stamp on the thing, or, you know, that's what that would be. And, um, and basically, you know, Hey, Mrs. Johnson, um, you know, it's super important that we're going to deliver a great experience to you. Um, at the end of the job, I know we're starting today, but in three days we're going to be done. Um, we're going to do everything we can to grade out at a hundred percent on here or get all A's or however you do it. 
And uh, here's some ways for you to grade us in different areas. Give us some feedback. It'd mean the world to me if at the end of the job that you um, fill this out, seal the envelope and just hand it back to me and I'll just turn it in. Yeah. Or you can mail it. They can just mail it. And, um, and if there's anything along the way that's going to prevent you from giving me a hundred percent on this thing as an experience, please point it out to me and I'll take care of it immediately. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you know, what good is it if we have lots of leads, lots of sales, we're finishing jobs on time, but it's a bad experience because that's going to spread like wildfire, you know? So I think, you know, those would be four metrics that I, I think would be important to look at on a regular basis. So I suppose getting towards the end of this episode now, I'd just like to talk maybe a little bit about um, what you see as, and I suppose it's different for different people. And I suppose it's different for different types of companies too. Like if you've got a team that's, you know, offshore or they're located in the state or they're all over the place, then obviously a whiteboard is not going to be the best place to, to, you know, to post all these, these things. But do you, in your experience, um, I mean, are we talking like, uh, I, I know you said you've tried all the apps and you've done all that kind of stuff before. Um, what, mm-hmm. what do you think is the best solution for, you know, maybe organizations that are both local can, can do the onsite meeting each week. And then people that can't do the onsite meeting each week, like we're just talking yeah. like a Google calendar or we're talking like project management systems or, task management, like, you know, what, what sort of thing do you suggest? Yeah. You know, there's a million things out there, right? Um, I think, you know, everyone should have some sort of CRM thing in place. Yeah. And the best CRM is the one you use. <laughs> so, right. um, you know, most, most just don't use them. Well, um, I, I use one and I, you know, the one I refer to everybody is called estimate rocket. Yeah. Because it allows me, uh, and, and honestly, you know, I talked to the CEO of the company, um, I said, the one reason that I like this one the most is you do the best job of tracking leads and sales. Yeah. You know, it just spells it out in the dashboard and I can look and go, how many leads came in from this source and did it lead to money and how much money? Um, not to mention that you can put, do proposals in it. You can email them, you can create work orders and it's really simple. Um, that being said, I mean, there's base CRM, there's pipeline deals, there's so many different things out there. Um, and so I, you know, use whatever's comfortable, depending on the industry. If you're a, you know, a, a company that does a lot of landscape maintenance and stuff like that, you know, something like Jobber is probably going to be a good fit. Um, or a million of diff- different things. Um, so that can keep everyone on the same page. You can communicate, you know, work orders and notes and things like that about the customers. Um, as far as a weekly meeting, let's say your team is all scattered all over the place. And sometimes it just, it's really, it's a commitment to get everyone to come in and pay for the drive time and pay for the meeting and sit there and that can add up. So maybe instead of that, you hop on go to meeting. Yeah. Oh, um, or what's the other one? There's another one that you can see everybody. Oh, team uh, viewer or yeah, the heaps. Yeah. Something, something like that. You know, there's enough, there are enough things in our, in our day and age for us to make it happen. The, the, the number one thing is to make it happen. Um, you know, so I think it depends on the industry. It depends on, um, you know, what you're going to use. And, and then I think you have to commit to using it, whatever it is. Um, you know, I've made that mistake where, you know, I jump ship off of something before we all got used to it. Yeah. And work the kinks out and things like that. So, um, you know, Google Calendar is great. You know, if you just want a simple free thing to, you got a small team, you want to get everyone on the same page. You know, absolutely. So that's cool. You know, the whole technology thing is 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 crazy. There's so many things out there. So look, I think we pretty much got to the end of this episode, thus the end of this series. Um, I suppose some of my t- key takeaways from this this episode specifically were, you know, if you, when you when you're setting your weekly meetings and you're setting your KPIs or whatever it is, just make it consistent across the board and just hold keep people accountable to those specifically and don't jump in and be constantly changing things and changing metrics and whatnot. Um, and then obviously track your, make sure you're, you're setting, you're accountable to your leads, you're accountable to profit, you're accountable to, uh, management and fulfillment and that kind of thing. Um, and then also if you can implement some sort of, you know, customer feedback, which can give you, I suppose, a practical feedback from a customer's perspective on what you are and potentially are not doing quite as well as you could be, then you can't really go too far wrong from there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and and the whole thing with this consistent accountability on certain KPIs or metrics is, you know, which of us, I mean, we all want to know if we're winning. Yeah. 
you know, but if I'm not consistent with how we're measuring that, then my people are never going to know what target they need to aim for and how to get better. So I, you know, this is, um, you know, we're creatures of habit and we want to know what to expect when we walk into a meeting. We want to know how we're being measured. I mean, you know, if you're a um, field goal kicker in the National Football League, you know, how do you know if you're doing your job? Well, you make kicks, right? It's pretty clear. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, all of us want to know that. And so maybe you have a metric. Uh, here's one that I didn't share earlier, but maybe for your four minutes, you know, you need to maintain a, a 53% gross profit average on all your projects yeah. in order to, for us to consider you winning, you know? and upsell 10% of the original ticket price or whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could, again, this is about your own choices and your own business, what's important to you. Just be consistent. Yeah. All right. Well, that's fantastic. We're going to wrap this up now, Tom. I just want to say thank you very much for your time. Uh, before we go, can you give us a bit of a rundown on your ebook? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I have a, I have a book I'd love ever anyone to head over there and i know you'll put the link in the uh in the show notes but it's motorhard m-o-t-o-r-h-a-r-d.com uh slash six dash figures and the gist of this is um learning how to take home at least a hundred thousand bucks a year from your contracting business i don't mean revenue i mean your take home hundred thousand dollars plus and i share some different um strategies that are going to help you to do that. You know, we talk about making the decision to change your life. We talk about clarity. We talk about consistency and different strategies and, and, um, reframing things that happen in your business. And these are all things that I've learned, uh, through the year of my own business and working with, uh, other contractors and, and business leaders that are absolutely killing it and, um, and loving, loving their life and loving their business. So head over there and and pick that up. There'll definitely be links in the show notes for that. Um, for all the listeners out there, go ahead and grab that. And um, Tom, what's the best way for people to reach out to you if they want to continue this conversation? Absolutely. They can go to motor, M-O-T-O-R, hard, H-A-R-D.com, or they can go to Motor Strong on Twitter. Beautiful. And once again, I'll post some links to those pages in the show notes. So Tom, mate, thank you very much for joining us in that series. Uh, it's been fantastic. And I'm sure... All the listeners out there coming into a new year um, will certainly have some work to do in uh, setting up these goals and getting things happening the way they should be. For the listeners out there, if you do have questions, you can either contact uh, Tom directly or just post some questions in the comment section of the show notes there. Um, and I will gladly touch base with Tom again on behalf of you. And we can either get him back on the show to answer your questions or um, I can send you that link directly and you can follow up with him yourself. So. Uh, Tom, Merry Christmas from Australia. <laughs> well, Matt, I appreciate you having me. Merry Christmas to you as well. And I, um, uh, it's an honor to be on, on your show. And for anybody that uh, you know has questions or anything like that, hit me up anytime you want. I'm happy to help. Yeah, mate, we might, um, we might get you back on the show at some stage. We, we typically get quite a lot of people uh, come in with questions and stuff. So uh, we may need to draw on your expertise once again. Sounds good, buddy. All right, well, let's wrap that up. And for everyone else out there, I hope you have a happy and safe Christmas and New Year period. Thank you for listening to another episode of Toolbox Talks. If you're liking what you hear, then you can head across to the siteshed.com where you can join our community by signing up to our Toolbox Talks. Uh, You'll get sent a weekly notification, which is basically a highlight of everything that we've spoken about during that week, along with any other industry news that may be relevant or specific to the trades. If you're enjoying the show, you can head across to iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud where you can leave us a review. Uh, That would be fantastic, and all the reviews get read out in the show. Uh, Likewise, if you have any friends or colleagues that you think would benefit from the show and the, the episodes that we create, then please go ahead and share it with them.